Do you want to get faster? You want to drop that 40 time? You want to increase your speed on the football field, on the soccer field, on the lacrosse field? If that's you, stay tuned to the rest of this video. What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from Garage Strength and one of the biggest factors behind success in field sports and court-based sports is understanding how to utilize speed and how to create speed in regard to locomotion for different athletes. And so when I say locomotion, I basically mean running fast, running agile and being able to cut rapidly, get out of those cuts and continue to develop speed on the field when you're in that competitive situation. And so one of the biggest things that we've got to understand is what muscles are we utilizing when we are putting out speed, when we are displaying speed, what muscle groups or what muscles specifically are we gonna be utilizing? And so we've gotta start right away with some of the key factors. And so the biggest muscle that we are going to be utilizing that is probably the dumbest, so the easiest to train, is going to be our glutes. We're gonna be using quite a bit of our glutes coming out of the blocks and, and or coming out of a starting position if you're a football player, and we are going to be utilizing them consistently through the entire cycling pattern. And so training our glutes is very, very important and the, the benefit behind knowing this is that they're pretty simple to train. If we hit big, big back squats, if we're hitting single leg squats, if we're hitting step ups and lunges, and even single leg glute bridges, things along these lines, it's pretty simple to smash our glutes and to increase our speed. The second area that, and, and this is not ranked in, in any particular order, the second area that we're gonna be working with and trying to, to strengthen is our hamstrings. Okay, so we've gotta know that our, our hamstrings insert and they're, they're connected at our hip joint and at our knee joint. And there's three different muscles that are gonna be utilized within the hamstrings. Now, one of the key factors behind hamstring strength is that they are extremely elastic and they can store a ton of energy. And the best way typically to train our hamstrings is through isometric dynamic contraction. So, pausing and utilizing an isometric contraction prior to incorporating a hip extension or anything along those lines is going to train our hamstrings as efficiently as possible to, to increase our speed and drop that 40 times, okay? So our quads, our quads are gonna be that next realm that we need to utilize to strengthen and improve our sprint mechanics. And so the rectus femoris is the only part of the quad. So if the quad, the quad makes up four different muscle groups, if we can think about the rectus femoris is the only quad muscle that is connected at the hip and at the knee joint. And the quad is extremely important for pushing, for that drive phase, especially coming out of the blocks. And so the stronger that we are in our quadriceps, the faster we're gonna be coming off the line and the faster we're going to be able to accelerate. So we've gotta understand that the quads play a massive role in speed performance. And then if we can sort of work down from the quads, now we've got the soleus and the gastroc. So now thinking about it, the gastroc is another biarticulate muscle group where it's actually connected at our knee joint and our ankle. And if we can know that our ankle has two joints behind it, and the gastroc plays a tremendous part along with the quads and the glutes for pushing off and, and working through that, that phase of extension while we're sprinting. It's extremely important that it's not trained in an isolation-based manner, but instead trained the way it should be with stretch shortening cycles. And if you wanna learn more about stretch shortening cycles, you can head over, you can pick up, you can check out our stretch shortening cycle video but all that stuff sort of comes back together where the, the gastroc needs to be trained in conjunction with our hamstrings, with our quads, with our, with our glutes through explosive means of training. And so if we get back to what's the next muscle group, let's think about our erectors and abs. And so we know the importance of the erectors coming out of the blocks, holding that posture proper and making sure that we're not in too much hip flexion when we're cycling that foot back underneath the torso. It's important that we understand that our ab strength 
and our erector strength is going to keep us more upright. Think about Michael Johnson running the 400 meters and he almost looked like he was falling backwards, but he was the first sprinter to really start to utilize and understand that that foot should be grounding directly under our center of mass. And going back to that gastroc and the soleus is that the way the erectors and the abs being upright, and now we understand that when we're landing, not flat footed, but in the middle of our foot, that creates a significant amount of a stretch reflex on our Achilles tendon, which can then store a ton of energy and then react throughout that sprint cycling phase. And so the erectors being upright can create more of a stretch shortening cycle in the gastro. Okay, so we cover all this in, our, in the five keys to becoming a freak athlete. You can download that for free today if you wanna learn more about becoming a freak athlete. But these are the main groups that we are gonna be utilizing. We will be when we're running, when we're sprinting. Adductors as well, and on top of that, uh, all throughout our iliopsoas with, with our abs is going to be responsible for maintaining our hip in the proper position so that we're not losing strength and losing speed because of our hip not having tension and not having a uh, proper position. But going back to our abs, and for all of these groups, it's very, very important to understand that when you're training for speed, it's not about getting on and doing leg curls or doing leg extensions to get a quad pump or doing single leg glute bridge and that's it, or doing calf raises and then doing isometric ab contractions, okay? We've got to recognize that all of these groups work together when we're generating a ton of speed and a ton of force. And especially our abs and our erectors, our abs are reactive, okay? They are reactive when we're sprinting. So the best way to train our abs when we're focusing on speed development is through the reactive uh, dynamic capabilities that they have developed through sprint mechanics. So make sure that we are training these all together and you can pick up our 12 week sprint training program today because we utilize all of these strength exercises and all these muscle groups synergistically so that we can constantly improve our speed, maintain our, our, our structural integrity and constantly get a little bit faster while getting a little bit stronger. So if you like this information, head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick up our sprint training program today. Head over, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Peace.